You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is electric current, and we want to know how do you calculate current, how do you describe the direction of current, and why does a light bulb light immediately? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. There are two requirements for an electric circuit. First, there must be an energy source, and second, a closed conducting loop that extends from the positive to the negative terminal of that energy source. And when these two requirements are met, we say that charge is flowing through the circuit and a current is present. But current is more than just a conceptual notion. It's a mathematical quantity that's defined as the rate at which charge passes by a point on the circuit. Like any rate quantity, the formula for current will be expressed on a per time basis. The formula here is current, represented by the symbol I, is equal to the ratio of Q per T. Q is the quantity of charge usually expressed in the unit coulomb, and, time, and T is the time in seconds. If you wanted to find the current in a wire, you could take one point on that wire and measure the quantity of charge that passes by that point in some amount of time, and then take the ratio of the Q per T. The unit for current is the ampere, abbreviated amps, and represented by the symbol A, where one ampere of current is equivalent to one coulomb of charge that passes by a point on the circuit in a second of time. In other words, one A is equal to one C per S. Current is a rate quantity. There's numerous rate quantities in physics. Velocity, acceleration, and power are a few of the more popular ones. Like any rate quantity, current expresses the amount of something on a per time basis. It's the amount or quantity of charge Q that passes by a point on the circuit in a given amount of time T. Let's gain some familiarity with this equation to complete the following five word statements. In the first, five coulombs of charge flow past a point in two seconds. If that's the case, the current is the Q per T, the 5 divided by the 2, the coulombs divided by the second, and that gives us 2.5 amperes. In the second question, 6 coulombs of charge flow past a point in 12 seconds. If that's the case, the current is the Q per T, the 6 coulombs divided by the 12 seconds, and that's 0.5 coulombs per second, or 0.5 amperes. The third question is quite different. It says if blank coulombs of charge flow past a point in 4 seconds, then the current is 5 amperes. Now I know the I. The I is 5, and that tells me that the numerator must be 5 times the denominator. The denominator is 4 seconds, so the numerator must be 20 coulombs. Coulombs. In the fourth question, four coulombs of charge flow past point A in two seconds. That means the current at point A is 2.0 amperes. That means also the current at point B must be 2.0 amperes. That is, the Q per T ratio at point B must be 2. So if the time is 6 seconds, the, cur the coulombs is 12 coulombs. In 5, it's very similar to 4. If 5 coulombs flow past point A in 10 seconds, then the current is 0.5, and that's the ratio of the Q per T at any location, which means at point B, if the T is 4, then the Q must be 2 coulombs. The carriers of charge within the wires of electric circuits are negatively charged mobile electrons. Within street lamps, fluorescent lamps, or semiconductors, the charge carriers can be positive charges, negative charges, or even both types of charges. With so many possibilities of charge types that could be moving, how exactly do we describe the direction of electric current? The answer to this question has historically been answered by means of a convention or agreement among scientists. The agreement is this. The direction of conventional current within a circuit is the direction that positive charges would move. In other words, within the battery, the direction of current is from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. To be quite honest, we should probably call it from the minus terminal to the plus terminal. Because after all, the idea is that charge is taken away or subtracted from one of the terminals and added to the other terminal, thus the minus and the plus. Outside of the battery, the direction of conventional current flow is from the positive terminal through the light bulb back to the negative terminal. Be careful to not confuse current with drift speed. Current refers to the number of charges that pass by a point in a second of time. Drift speed refers to how fast the charges are moving, the distance they travel in a second of time. For certain, the drift speed of charges within a circuit is very, very slow, on the order of about a mile per hour. 
Yet, with so many charges drifting, you could have many of them cross a point on the circuit in a second of time. You don't need to have charges moving large distances to have a large current. You just need to pack the charges very densely within the wire, lined up next to that point, so that many of them cross that point in a second of time. Everyone likes racing analogies, so let's use a racing analogy to illustrate the difference between drift speed and current. Let's imagine a turtle race occurring on an oval track. For certain, turtles do not travel very fast. Yet, if we had a lot of them lined up, densely lined up, next to the finish line, I mean like really densely lined up, then a lot of them could cross over that finish line in a second of time. That would be a situation where you'd have a large current, but a small drift speed. Students are troubled by the question of why does a light bulb immediately light when you close a circuit? When you flip the switch or make the connection of that last wire to the terminal of the battery, we observe the light bulb immediately lights. Let's talk about what's going on. When you make the final connection, there are four things that take place. The first is an electric potential difference is established across the two ends of the circuit. There's a difference in potential between location A and location D. The second is that an electric field signal reaches every electron within the wires and bulb of that circuit. The third is that the electrons begin moving everywhere, all along that circuit, every wire, every atom, every filament, the electrons begin moving. And finally, the light bulb lights. There's no perceptible time delay between when you close the circuit and you observe that the light bulb is lighting. Here's why. The electrons that are lighting the bulb are not coming from the battery. They don't have to move from location A to location B for the bulb to light, nor do they have to move from location D to location C for the bulb to light. The electrons that are lighting the bulb are the electrons that are in the filament. 20 minutes later, perhaps, the electrons lighting the bulb might be the ones that started in the cell of the circuit, but the light bulbs that immediately light the bulbs are the ones that are located within the bulb itself. Electrons indeed move very slowly but their motion begins immediately, and it's this immediate onset of motion that leads to the immediate lighting of the bulb. Our model of charge flow within electric circuits is a model that pictures charges as marching soldiers, marching together within every wire at the same rate. This marching begins as soon as the electric potential difference is established across the two ends of the circuit. When we think about these charge carriers, we can claim that they're not consumed and they're not used up and they do not disintegrate and they're never destroyed. They don't take any exit ramps and there's nowhere within the circuit where they pile up or accumulate. They're just 100% conserved. When we look at the circuit above me, we'll notice that there's two sets of arrow tails. An arrow tail is an arrowhead followed by a collection of lines which we call arrow tails. The number of lines that you see following the arrowhead is indicative of the current in that particular wire. And if you do a comparison of the arrow tails in the top wire to that in the bottom wire, you'll notice that it has the same number of arrow tails. Indicate indicating that the current in the wire that leads from the positive terminal of the battery to the light bulb is the same as the current that goes from the bulb to the negative terminal of the light bulb. Since charge is conserved and not consumed, we can claim that the rate at which charge exits the battery is the same as the rate at which charge enters the battery. Current is everywhere the same. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, a concept builder, both great questioning modules to make the learning stick, and finally a tutorial page page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.